Yep. My wife's talking to me for anybody that is listening in. Uh, we're a couple minutes early, but you know, that's, uh, that's the way it goes on a pre-show. Um, good evening to 3D Medic Vince, 3D Printing PA, Robert Marvin, Ken Strock, Ben Brady, Johnny Gardner, and anybody else that might be watching that's not in the chat this evening. Um, as you can see on your screen right now, we've got uh, the Creality CR10 V2 running. Um, I've got a full review coming out on this fairly soon, uh, so watch for that. And there's Snapshot FPV and Conspired One, or Conspired One, Conspired One, there we go. And then we got Cliff, good evening Cliff. And we're just going to, it's just me tonight and my lovely wife who's behind the controls. I can't see you, honey. It's the wrong camera. So, <laughs> so everybody say hello to my lovely wife, Jerry, G-E-R-I, who's here in the studio with me tonight. Sausage, that's a nice looking printer, sure beats my A8. <laughs> I've got the chat up so I can see what's going on, and I increased the font size so I could see what was going on. Hey, there's Mike Brown, David Clark, Mark L. Baker. He says he can't stay long this evening. Well, that's okay. Oh, look at all the hello to Jerry. Yeah, everybody's saying hi to my lovely wife. Who's camera shy, by the way? Good thing you told me to spell my name, eh? Yeah. Spell my name. All right, so there we go. <laughs> oh, she's been watching. What, what were we watching that? We've been watching Disney Plus uh, at home for a little while. Uh, sausage upgraded with a metal frame and linear rails. I agree. Um, there's Mike Brown. Hello, sir. All right, so tonight's Q&A. Uh, how well can you guys hear me? Is it good audio? Just let me know. You're probably going to hear this fan going. You just wait for everybody to kind of give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down for audio. You're probably going to hear the fan in, in the uh, CR10 uh, version 2 going here. Okay, we got three thumbs up. Great. All right. So tonight it's Q&A. Whatever you guys want to ask related to 3D printing, we are going to do their Spartan Props. Hello, lovely Richard, she says. Hello, lovely Spartan Props. That's Jess, who's at home this evening. Uh, all good, sounds great, sounds good here, just dandy, all good, excellent. So there's THC Authority, um, Larry Hall, High Tech Redneck is in the house as well. So yeah, like I said, tonight is Q&A, so anything you guys want to ask related to 3D printing, I will do my best to answer. There's David Clark from the UK, hello to the UK, hello to Southern California, where's everybody from tonight? That's what I want to know. I want to. I know some of where some of you guys are, but uh, I don't know where everybody is. So, did you just hit show on that one, honey? That's fine. Am I not supposed to do that? No, you can go ahead. You hit show unless it's something that doesn't well, sit well. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Well, you doesn't know that. Even children. Have you got snow, Ben's asking. Well, it's not 3D printed related, but yes, we do have snow. Not yeah, barely. <laughs> um, it's my niece's first birthday today. Sorry I couldn't be there with you guys. So Spartan Props is out celebrating her niece's first birthday. Tim Horton's Coffee's, wow, Memphis, Calgary, Cincinnati, Ohio, Martindale, Texas. Near Albany, New York, Mississippi, Southern Oregon, Australia, North Bay, Ontario, Canada, uh, SPA, that's Timothy Tentinger, hello sir, um, Yachts, Oregon, I don't think I've ever heard of Yachts, Oregon, Mike Brown, Calgary, I know where Mike's from, um, 
Looking for a direct drive printer about the size of the Ender 3, Johnny Gardner. Um, direct drive, you could look at the Wanho Duplicator 3 or the Duplicator 3 Plus. Both of those are direct drive. Um, they're good printers. They're a little bit more expensive than the Ender 3. Uh, the build size of them is a little bit smaller, though. Not very much. Uh, SoCal. So Southern California. There we go. Uh, Vancouver, Washington. The original Vancouver. There's Wayne. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Brisbane, Australia. Holy cow. Yeah, Ben, you're right. You can convert the Ender 3 to uh, direct drive. It's not that hard. There's lots of files on Thingiverse if you wanted to go that route, or you could go, uh, if you wanted to spend a little money, you could do a direct drive from, uh, what is that company? It's escaping me right now. Ah. I can't remember. I hate it when that happens. Um, it's a big company. BMG Extruders. Um... Well, there's another Albuquerque, Lee Carlson. Hello. Uh, I did it on my Ender. I set it back after a while. Okay, so uh, High Tech Redneck, why did you go back to the uh, direct drive or back to the Bowden setup um, and get rid of the direct drive? I'm interested to hear why you did that. Rex Waldy, Medicine Hacked. Yeah, I know where Rex is from because he's been in the store the odd time. Um, Good evening, everyone. There's Richard Taylor. Hello, sir. Zesty Tech, David Clark. Um, Zesty Tech, I'm not familiar with their products uh, very much, but um, I do know that they have different products. I think they're a little bit on the lower end. Uh, Bond Tech was the company I was thinking of. Finally came to my, my mind. Uh, $35 on Amazon. Uh, Johnny Gardner, uh, Ben saying so. Um, yeah, Zesty Tech, you can go with Zesty. Um, bon Tech, Raymond Emsley. Thank you, Raymond. I, I did say Bon Tech. Um, there's Raymond. Raymond's going to be one of our uh, moderators in the room tonight. Uh, we are right here with the, like I said, the uh, CR10 version 2. We're doing our first print on it. A uh, review of this will be coming out real soon. Uh, coming out um, next week, you guys are going to see a really unique... Uh, well, I guess it's not so much a unique printer. I think I might hold that off for one more week, but I'm going to give you a review on some really cool filament that's only available in the U.S., and that's all the spoilers you're getting. Uh, Jetsmate is further down in Victoria, Australia. G'day to y'all. G'day. G'day. I'm not going to say put another shrimp on the Barbie. You just did. Well, I didn't say it in an Australian voice, honey. Okay. There you go. Um, so high tech, you said, because oh, you were getting ghosting from the extra weight. That's interesting. I'm not surprised by that. Um, and I think that uh, at the end of the day, uh, that's where that jerk setting, if you lower that jerk setting down, that might have taken, taken some of it away, as well as lowering down the, the speed of your print. Um, it, it's kind of cool because when you run prints, especially when you're doing direct drive, if you're running them right around uh, 40, 45 millimeters per second and you bring that jerk value down to about 5, you can almost eliminate all that. And even with, you know, the, uh, the Bowden setup here, it's kind of the same thing. I, I, I rarely have my prints over 50 millimeters per second just because... Um, I find I get a much better print at, at a slower rate. Zesty Nimble. I'm not, you know, we've got a couple of Zesty Nimbles on a printer here, and I haven't really examined them too much, but I really would like to get a, a good close look at a Zesty Nimble. Maybe somebody can hook me up with one. I want to remind you guys that we do have the Super Chat turned on tonight. If you're enjoying what's going on and you feel like you'd like to help us with our Shenzhen Fund, uh, Brian and I are trying to get to Shenzhen next year in October, and uh, we need to raise, I guess about $5,000 is what we need to raise um, for flights, hotels, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you'd like to, there's uh, the Super Chat. That's that little dollar sign down below the chat there. 
if you'd like to throw us a couple of coins. If not, that's okay too. Leave a like and uh, leave a comment on, on tonight's live stream. That's always helpful. Uh, that helps us as well. So, And we got this wonderful merch. Speaking of merch, guess what this is? This filament in front of me is PLA the first layer gray. So this is our official gray for the first layer. We also have the purple as well. Uh, they're exclusively available through spool3d.ca and spool3d ships all over the world as most of you guys know. Um, I'm just kind of trying to catch up here. I have two Ender 3s. One is a direct drive and the other is Bowden. I don't see any difference. Johnny Gardner, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. We'll give uh, Johnny a, a nice big happy face there, honey. Give him a, there you go, right down there. We'll give him a big happy face. Pick one. There we go. My, my wife's doing all the keyboard work tonight. She's acting as the, the keyboard warrior. There we go. She's just going to have fun now with, with emojis. <laughs> I never do super chat, but that sweet, sweet purple t-shirt looks awesome, and I will put one of those. I'll, I'll... Yeah, this will this t-shirt is available through our Teespring store, and there's a link in the description. Um, uh, just hit the emoji again, honey. Go down to the bottom. See, there you go. Click that again. There you go. Now you can type again. Uh, Spool 3D are great. Thank you, THC Authority. We, uh, we appreciate I'm doing a good job, Johnny Gardner. Thank you very much once again for the kind words. Ben saying, hi, Jerry. Hi, Ben. Um, we have got a lot of things going on here. Now, you guys know we've kind of been inconsistent the last little while. There's been a lot going on. I've been sick. There's Rover. Hello, Rover. Uh, I've been sick, and I've had family issues that have been going on and stuff outside of, of Spool 3D, so... Um, mostly it's the migraines because right now we're in a type of season here in, in Alberta where we get a lot of Chinooks and it's almost every second day we're getting a Chinook. We're going from minus 16 degrees to plus 10 uh, basically overnight and it really plays havoc with my head and the pills that I take are $100 a pill so I take them very very sparingly because I don't have insurance uh, because I'm an independent guy. Now, yes, for anybody that's going to ask, I do work for Spool 3D, but I only work part-time for Spool 3D. So this is my other income, what we get from uh, the show. And uh, <laughs> Richard has lost his razor. Yes, I have. And I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, I'm growing out my beard over the winter. So I'm 3D printing my own beard. Marco Baker, in your opinion, do you absolutely have to do the mosaic keychain as a first print or can you use other multicolor STL files uh, to teach my palette to Pro S? Uh, Mark, as far as I know, you have to do the keychain to make sure that it comes out correct, pardon me, correctly. If it does come out correctly, then you've got it calibrated correctly for the printer that you're using. Um, I did not calibrate it correctly when I did the keychain when I had the Palette 2 Pro here um, and unfortunately I never got a, a, a great print out of it. Uh, I love the Palette 2, don't get me wrong, I think it's a great multicolor machine. Um, Multi-material I'm still on the fence about but multicolor is great. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Why is my phone ringing? Um, Give you yeah helicopters do give me headaches as well um <laughs> i'm lazy with the razor my wife says i feel your pain you can uh, recommend your filament to the frustrated beginner oh can i recommend filament to the frustrated beginner here's what i would say to you uh tech graphics 101 tech graphics 101 um what i would say to you is this uh Find a filament that you like that's not overly expensive. Keep it in that, I would say that $25 to $30 range. You're going to get a better quality pure, uh, filament in most cases. 
Uh, make sure, of course, that your bed is fully leveled. If it is not, um, it, uh, it can cause you problems. Not all filaments are created equally, is what I'm saying. Yeah, migraines do suck, William. Um, Johnny's asking, where's my drink? I don't have one tonight because I am in the studio at Spool 3D right now. I'm not at home. If I was at home, I'd probably have a drink. Uh, vertigo sucks too. I get that as well. Um, Jetsmate says, last time I logged in, you didn't have a beard. No, I didn't. I've been growing this now for, what, a couple of weeks, honey? A few weeks, yeah. So, 3D printing. My beard, six inches, Rover says. <laughs> Excellent. Got to take some pictures then, Rover. One rest. Yes, vertigo is bad. Get it all the time. Um, yeah, I would say uh, Tech Graphics 101. Just look for a decent filament. If you're in Canada, um, filaments I would recommend would be Kodak filament. Um, any of the color fab filaments are good. Of course, Spool 3D filaments are great. Uh, Spool 3D will ship anywhere in the world. Um, eSun PLA Plus, mostly I get it uh, in store. It's 25 and it prints uh, very nicely, High Tech Redneck says. Um, I've used eSun and I've never had a great success with it. I think because the eSun that we get here is not the greatest. Um, try Magic Goo from uh, Matter Hackers. Magic Goo works. Um, if I could suggest anything, glass and glue stick would be my, my first and foremost. Yeah, it's my go-to. Sausage, uh, TFL question if I may. Just installed the Ultramase glass bed on my A8, but can't seem to get all four corners to level. When I adjust one corner, the opposite side goes out. Yes, I will tell you exactly what's happening there. When you level a bed, everybody's been taught to go in a square. You don't want to go in a square. You want to go diagonally. So think about the X-Men when you are doing... Um, your bed leveling. So when you change the bottom left corner, the top right corner is also changing. It's going down as that's going up. So it, if you chase it around in a square, you're going to continually chase it. I've found through every time I, I bed level now by going diagonally, coming down, going back and diagonally and coming down, I only have to do it once or twice and it works great. Um, adjustment. Uh, would a BL Touch help with this damn issue sausage? A BL Touch would help, um, but you got to make sure you install it correctly. And if you if you don't install it correctly, it can be a real nightmare. Um, and make sure that your firmware is up to date so that it covers um, all of the all of the bed correctly and that you're not getting any um, uneven printing areas. Now what I do now in my slicer uh, for anything that's got a BL touch on it is I add G29 space P1 um, and that P1 helps to save that pattern that it's made for that particular print uh, into memory as well. So. It does help the print, uh, but you do have to get, I try, I like to do four points. Um, so it does four by four, so it's 16 points across the bed. I get a much better um, uh, bed level that way. So what would be the N, not an X pattern? The Well, when I say X pattern, I'm going from the bottom left to the top right, down to the bottom right, back up to the top left and then finishing off at the bottom left. I use the level corners options on the 3D or TH3D firmware. It's convenient. If it's working for you, great. Rex, still having problem with slipping when printing with the Arion Silk Gold. Any suggestions? I haven't had any issues with any of the silks that I've used, but I haven't used the gold. Raymond could probably answer that question. He's in our chat tonight. Um, Raymond Emsley, he's used the, the silk gold. I'm not sure what his um, uh, experience has been with it, though.
Sausage, you're welcome. Dennis, you're welcome as well. Um, yeah, I just, and Rick Land, and hello, Rick. Um, Z offset settings, it all depends on where your BL touches. On this particular unit here, and I'm going to talk about it in my review, um, this one has a BL touch already installed at the factory, so the firmware is already done, um, which is great for anybody buying it. I think this one is going for $749 or $799. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. If, you, if I'm wrong, guys, go and check out um, the uh, Spool 3D website at spool3d.ca. Silk Gold's amazing, says uh, Richard. Hoppy Naki. Hi, guys. Hi, Hoppy. Honey, can you pass me that water? I'm just uh, I'm getting a little parched. I'm talking so much. So I want to show you guys one of the prints that I did. Uh, this is a new print that I did in a uh, material called, what is this called? Something milk. Yes, I forgot. My wife's going to pass me the box. There we go. So... Graft Milk is the company that reached out to me, and it comes in this wonderful little style hat box. Uh, this is the Olive Drab. I'll talk a little bit about it on the live stream. They sent me two rolls, the Olive Drab, and they sent me a uh, sort of a sandy color. Uh, clay, I believe it's called. Matte clay. And I got to tell you, this particular filament... Um, here's the print that I did. I'm just going to turn this around so you guys can see it. Oh, that's not me letting out air. That's This is the print that I did. Or one of the prints that I did. This is in the Olive Drab. And now I'm not sure if this was one of the models that was scanned and then cleaned up and sent to me. But this particular model, um, this is called the Baroness. Now, they sent me this model, so I don't think it's available. Um, I printed this using tree supports. In my full review, you guys are going to hear a little bit more about this stuff. But I got to tell you, I am really impressed by the quality of this filament. It's a matte filament, only available in the U.S. So uh, watch out for this. This is coming on Wednesday, this, this review. All right, let's catch up with some uh, snack chocolate. It, yeah, it really is amazing. Anyone tri print a tree lawn? What in the heck is a tree lawn? There's Dennis Renton. Can you show a close-up of the texture of that bus, please? Yes, I can. Oh. Show the hair from behind. So there you guys go. Now, this was printed on an Ender 3 Pro with no modifications. There's the hair from the back. You guys can kind of see that there. And it is just amazing. How's that new CR-10 uh, going, I, I've been asked. Uh, it's going well. It was, I didn't do a build, a traditional build video on it, um, just because, in all honesty, we're going to start getting away from doing build videos. Um, I just don't think they work in the long, in the long scheme of things. Um, I'd rather show you what's in the box, put it together, come back, show you what it looks like when it's all together, and then go ahead and uh, start printing something. So you guys get to see how it actually prints. More so than just, you know, um, is it a good, does it look cool? Yeah, it looks great. It's Again, what they did with this one is they went and 
basically took the parts from the Pro, anodized them blue, and made a couple of concessions in the box. I'm not going to go into a lot about what's going on with, with what's in the box, but uh, suffice it to say that it is a silent machine, so I'm assuming there are 2208 steppers on it. The bust of the bust, LOL. Nice bust. <laughs> um, but I really, you know, for the loudest thing on this printer is the uh, fan, so uh, build videos are boring. I agree with you 100%. I find them boring too. I don't have a problem with it all. I have used their silk, silver, silk, gold, silk, purple, and no problems at all, Ray says. Um, yeah, Dennis, it is really a, a shame that they don't ship outside the U.S. Um, I think they saw what it cost to ship to me. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, at 34 bucks a roll, it's worth every penny. I hate to say it, but it's worth every penny. Remember to hit their thumbs up button. Thank you very much. Yes, that's right. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like and and share and and whatever else you want to do. Um, we are working now. We're we're in the planning stages of going to Shenzhen next year, Brian and I. Uh, and while we're there, we are we'll be going into many different factories. Um, so it's uh, it's going to be a lot of interesting content. Rick Layden, what uh, size nozzle was that lady model printed with? Here's the kicker. It was printed with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the Ender 3 Pro. What's the favorite part cooler upgrade for the stock E3? Um, what's my favorite part cooler? Um, in all honesty, you guys are going to laugh, but I like the stock cooling. I've never had a problem with the stock cooling. And I've tried the Pets Fang. And I've tried the Bullseye, and I've tried a number of other different ones on one of my Ender 3s. And just recently, I put it all back to stock, and I am getting perfect prints off it every time. Uh, some people like the Bullseye, some people like the Pets Fang. I think that at the end of the day, it's whatever you think is the best for you, whatever you're getting the best prints uh, from is the best one for you. For me... I have nothing wrong with the stock cooling. I think the stock cooling is, is more than adequate for the stuff that I do. And you guys know that I don't do a lot of intricate technical stuff. Uh, I'm not building rocket ships over here. Um, I am, however, building droids. And if my wife will pass me that droid, Ed, oh, as she knocks everything off of it, Now, anybody that's um, familiar with Mr. Baddeley's printed droids, you guys will know that uh, if you are a Patreon member of his or supporter of his, you can get files like this. Um, honey, can you hit show on that one, please? Um, you can get files like this to do all kinds of stuff. Now, this is a little droid head. The top comes off so you can store stuff in the, inside. There are other parts to this. This is designed to go on top of a, an empty spool, and then you build up three spools, and you build the drawers, and it's a storage cubby. Uh, I really like Mr. Baddeley's stuff. If you're into droids, uh, Star Wars droids in particular, he's the guy to, to follow on Patreon and Facebook and YouTube. More or less, I can see the nozzle better with the bullseye. Okay. So you can see the nozzle. I, you know, I just get down and look a little bit because it, it, it works for me. Ben saying the stock cooler is fine unless you need to do bridging. Um, funny that you should say that. I've got, I've got some tests coming that I, I used a stock cooler to do some bridging. And Ben, I may turn you around on that. So... Um, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on. Uh, coming up, I've got a lot max SC 10, uh, printer review that'll be coming out fairly soon. Not this week, but ne next week. Um, I've got to do some wrap ups on it and it will, uh, it will be really cool. William bullseye for me too. Also the visibility reasons. 
Cooling doesn't seem much different versus stock. Ah, you do follow them. Okay, good. No heat creep up the heat break, Rick says. What do I need to know a uh, fan to get rid of, of heat to keeping plastic from sticking? Um, it all, de all depends on what you're using, Rick. Are you using an Ender 3 stock hot end? Now, I've said this before, and I'll, I'll go to this camera again here. I'll just flip it around so you guys can see. So you guys can see I've got, this is a stock Creality uh, block with a stock Creality nozzle and a stock Creality heat break. Now there's no screws in here because I've taken off the, the heat sink, but a lot of people are saying that it's the screws that cause heat creep. It is not the screws that cause heat creep, and anybody that tells you that has not done any testing. And I've done testing on this. I've tested it here and I've tested it at home. It is this thermal tube that causes your heat creep. Because what happens is, because this goes down halfway into um, the block, the heat rises through this tube and it actually expands. And when it expands, and you guys can maybe see that, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but there's all kinds of plastic on, on the inside of that tube. What that's from is that once this expands, that tube moves a little bit and then it backfills with plastic. So this is your biggest offender of heat creep. What I would say to you to do is upgrade to a Micro Swiss um, all metal hot end and that would be my uh, recommendation for you. A side issue, are you located anywhere near the highway? Through hell I watch. The TV program here. Highway through hell? Um, no, I don't think so. I, it's not a production I'm familiar with. Fargo uh, was, pr was produced here. Uh, the TV show Fargo. Um, what, uh, Von Helsing? Is that her name? Um, she... Uh, there's a, a series, I think it's called Von Helsing. Is that what it's called, honey? No. No? What's it called? Fargo. Fargo is, yeah, I said, what's the one with the, with the, the girl with the gun? Why, yeah, Wynonna Earp. Wynonna Earp. Wynonna Earp is, is uh, filmed around here as well. Uh, all stainless steel. Uh, steel is a poor transformer of heat, Rick says. And, um, yeah, it is. This is why I like the machined parts of the um, Micro Swiss. I've never had a problem with a Micro Swiss. I've never had a clog with a Micro Swiss. Um, these things clog all the time. They just, they're just horrible. I, I hate them. Okay, that's produced in BC, I think. Yeah, yeah that's, that's produced in BC. So, we're getting a little off topic. Um, for anybody, the horse show, um, Heartland is filmed here. Um, there's a number of productions that are filmed in Alberta and, and around Calgary um, and South Calgary. Uh, but uh, there's not too many right now. Uh, just because of politics here in, in Canada and in the province. So, um, yeah, it's not great. It's not great. So, what did I learn this week? We t what did we talk about on Wednesday? I can't remember. Wow, Will, it's 2.30 a.m. for you right now. Wow. What the heck, Will? Need to sign up. Go to bed. Thank you for visiting with us tonight, William. Go get some sleep, and I will check my email. Yes, I did see your email about, yes, I did, William. Um, I just, I haven't had time to respond to it, but I will. Send me another one just so I don't forget. Send me another one so I don't forget.
Sorry, I am just old. Jets mate. That's okay. I'm old too. I'm in my 50s. Creeping up on that 55 coming pretty soon. I used to get clogs when I put in Capricorn. Uh, and Oh, then you put in Capricorn and you haven't had one since. Uh, Capricorn... Part of the pro, part of the solution with Capricorn is it doesn't break down nearly as fast as the white tubing. Um, this Teflon tubing starts to break down at about 235, 240. Uh, so if you're doing higher temp materials, or if you're doing a, an extendedly long print, even at 220, this will start to break down. So if you're doing it at a long period of, uh, or a long print run, I find. Chat soon. Yes, we will. William, have a good night, my friend. All right. So this week on Wednesday, I can't remember what we talked about. I use a titanium heat break with a filament oiler and I never get clogs. Um, I'm still not convinced about filament oilers. Uh, I've tried them. I think that they can cause problems. I'm going to do some more testing with one. Uh, here very soon and we're gonna we're gonna do something with that in the spring we are going to put a print out in the Sun oh Jeff's mate I'm 82 Wow congratulations and you're a 3d printing enthusiast that's awesome that is awesome somebody called me a, a baby boomer um, in the comments on pre a couple of previous videos and uh, I had to correct them. I'm not a baby boomer. I'm a Gen Xer. I was born in 1965. You missed it by a year. I missed it by a year. That's right. So I can officially say I'm a Gen Xer. Even though I don't look like a Gen Xer. I look more like a baby boomer. You like what uh, Jess has done back here? She says, my boat don't float. Hashtag Benchy Love. My boat don't float. Hey, there's Edge of Tech. Welcome, sir. It's been a while since we've done a uh, full-blown live stream. Now, Brian has just got back today from Ontario. So he's, uh, he's celebrating a, a birthday with Jess uh, for her niece. So neither one of them are with us tonight. Um, they, uh, they deserve some time together. They haven't really seen each other in the last two months three months I think they've had like they've been like ships in the night but I'm glad to see that uh, he's back and and everything's going cool so Jim what's going on over at the edge of tech Rex Waldy's going to be turning 65 next month So we got some really cool um, reviews coming up for you on some new printers. I want to get back into doing um, tutorials. Uh, so if you guys really want to see more tutorials, please let me know by you know commenting uh, on tonight's live stream. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. Born in '63, snapshot FPV. 3D, I'd like to see this unit with the direct drive shown on the website offered uh, when order placed. Um, this unit here that, that we've got tonight, this is not a direct drive. And I have not seen the direct drive version of this yet. Um, it may be coming out, I don't know. Um, they've been pretty tight lipped for us. Uh, we showed off this thing not too long ago, which. I really like and that's the 3d viewer from Creality if you don't want to go through all the um, headache and pain of setting up uh, you know uh, an octoprint then that's a good alternative uh, just hanging out nice long stream today and going to jump on another one soon well very good Oh, you were to be given one with your order when they changed it after um, and others paid for it. Oh, that's 
That's neat. Uh, I'd like to know more about that. I'll look into that and see what I can find out for you, um, 3D, and then maybe we can uh, have an answer for you next Saturday. Jim got the printer really to go for Monday, Larry Hall. Now, you guys are probably wondering what happened to the longer LK4. Um, the longer LK4 uh, printer that we had here and we had recorded a review, um, that printer had a lot of problems with it, and we did not do, we didn't publish the review, uh, just because I think that it really needs more R&D. Now I see it showing up on uh, AliExpress and some of the Chinese sites, uh, but I think the longer LK4 needs a little bit more work in R&D before it, it's ready. Um, my review of the um, TiVo Tarantula is still coming. Um, there's a lot of footage there, so I'm, I'm trying to break it down into about a half an hour. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, so 3D was saying that he was included, so he ordered it, and then when it arrived, it wasn't in the package. Gotcha. Okay. Did you print the subscribe button, and where did you find the STL? Well, This didn't exist. I made this STL. Um, I basically took a flat image and made the the sign for this, and then just put uh, one of the cubes, one of my sixty sixty cubes. I just kind of glued it to the back, and uh, now it uh, sits here on my shelf, reminding people to subscribe. So if you want that STL, I'll have to look for it. I, I don't have that uh, readily available. It's buried in my archives of STL somewhere. I probably have, I'd say probably a thousand STLs, if not more, um, on a single hard drive. I have one that's just dedicated to STLs. Do they need a lot of parts replaced out of the box? I don't think so. Um, the, the longer LK4 needs better engineering. The bed was bad. Um, the two uprights, these two uprights, uh, were not cut straight. Um, so I had to recut them, and all I did was took a half a saw blades width off of each end to square them up. Uh, so I did replace the bed. I did I did fix up these uprights on the Z-axis. Um, and I also added a couple of braces because what was happening is the Y-axis, because they oversized the holes for the crossbar on the Y-axis, it would do this. It would literally tilt forward. Um, so you'd never get a good print out of it. So once I stiffened that up, I put it in a couple of 20-20 uh, corner brackets and it stiffened it up. And now it's working great, but it's no longer that original machine. So, and it's going to a brand new home. So, um, some friends of mine I know that uh, are in a bit of a, of a financial predicament. They wanted to get in, and um, I figure I'll set them up with a 3D printer that was sent to me uh, that I fixed up for them, and uh, they'll they'll do well. So let's get into some more questions. Backup, backup, backup. Yes, that's for sure. Backup, backup, backup. I have a number of different drives that I use for backup. Um, I've really upped my backup game now. I've been whenever I see a four terabyte drive on sale, I go pick one up. This is just water with some of that fancy infuser. Water enhancer, and it's my wife's got me hooked on these water enhancers. The plus side of that is it keeps me away from uh, pop for the most part. Ah, Tech Graphics 101 says, Really, mine's a longer LK4 that could be part of my frustration. We'll look it over a bit closer. One of the things, the biggest problem I had with mine, uh, Tech Graphics 101, is that. 
when that x-axis went across this side which would be the right side if you were facing the printer I could never get the wheels to all grab the upright and then I basically put it on a shelf and I backed up about 15 feet and had a good look at it and I literally noticed that it was like it was on an angle not as much as this but I noticed that it was on an angle and um, at the end of the day once I fixed that it fixed my X gantry issue so all three wheels would tighten up and I could get a, a really good level out of that and I could square it to the frame um, the bed when that aluminum bed heated up it literally had a wave in it so the glass that they sent with it wasn't any better so I got rid of that whole bed and I put on a machined aluminum bed with a silicone heater on the bottom and now it heats up great uh, it's magnetic so there's a flex plate on it and it does a really great job can CD or DVD be used to store STL files uh, or anyone know of a library of STLs on DVD uh, ISO Rick I don't know um, if there's anything like that out there but uh, storing your STLs on recordable media your lifespan is about five years so um, after a while those CDs and, and, and DVDs they start to break down the recordable kind uh, and they're only really good for about five years so if you wanted to keep something long term I wouldn't put it on uh, a CD or a DVD I would get an external drive and no those two will degrade over time um, I would put it on some kind of flash media like an SSD uh, because they will hold it a lot longer and it won't degrade nearly as fast uh, Ben Brady but it keeps you away from the Jack and Coke yes it does it does keep me away from the Jack and Coke um, yeah you can store it but I wouldn't store it on on uh, DVDs ah Jim Edge of Tech he's uh, giving away a printer it looks like hey there's Paul Cumber have a happy Thanksgiving and everybody in the States, your Thanksgiving is coming up pretty soon, isn't it? We've had ours already, uh, so yours is coming up pretty soon. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the U.S. Um, you guys, we've got Black Friday coming up here uh, this next Friday on the 29th. Uh, that's Black Friday weekend going into December. So 29th, 30th, or pardon me, yeah, 29th, 30th, the 1st and the 2nd. Uh, Spool 3D will be having Black Friday specials, uh, so make sure you check out their their website for any specials that you want to get in on. Every the last day of the Black Friday weekend, uh, which is going to be the second of December, um, there's always filament on sale, so it's always a good chance to stock up. Uh, Ram 19.99. How do I change my V rep on my extruder with a pancake stepper? There's an equation for that, um, and I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, I would just look up the, what pancake stepper do you have, Ram 1999? Um, and I would go ahead and check what the voltage is and what type of stepper driver you're actually using. And you should be able to figure out the V-Rep on that. Printers on sale, Larry. I think there might be one or two on sale. Uh, we've got one right now that is on sale. It's the Mars 2 uh, from Mama Robot. It's a great little printer with a uh, 8 inch by 8 inch by 8 inch build volume, fully enclosed. Um, and you, it's got auto bed leveling, it's got a polypropylene removable bed. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, look at one of those. I think they're on sale right now for $6.99 on the Spool 3D website. Um, once they're gone, they're gone. So Rick, you like to mass, <laughs> mass factory press craft DVD of 1,000 STLs as I like to give as gifts. Um, that's a great idea. Just be sure, Rick, that when you're giving away those STLs, that you're not infringing on anybody's um, uh, 
creative licensing on those STLs, whether you got them from Thingiverse or wherever. Um, I always like to check with designers just to make sure that, you know, I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. When I make something, um, it's, I usually contact the designer to see if they're okay with me doing the actual print, the finish, and um, the painting and getting it all ready. Yeah, Raymond's been using one here in the shop for the last two weeks. It is a good little printer with auto bed leveling, an all metal direct drive hot end for six ninety nine. That's not bad. Uh, Paul says he likes the glow in the dark filament. I don't really use glow in the dark. Um, I don't have any real need to. I might do something in the new year with glow in the dark. And I know somebody's going to ask, where is the Prusa printer that I've been building from scratch? It's sitting right there, and it will get finished, and we'll keep going on it. So Jim um, is giving away two printers uh, this coming week, so good on, good on you, Jim. Um, I don't have any... No DVDs sold at dealers. No, there's no DVDs as far as I know sold at dealers for STLs. I, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I don't have it in my budget to give away printers. I wish I did. Or buy printers and give them away. Uh, be there or be square. See you then. Okay, Larry. Larry's looking to get a free printer, which is good. 3D Artwood Filament is awesome. Conspired one. I haven't tried their filament, but I'd really like to get some and try it out. Uh, I've been testing out uh, Kodak filament as of late as well. And i got to tell you, man, I really am starting to dig that Kodak filament. My only problem with the Kodak filament is that it's not a full um, kilo. It's only 750 grams, but it's designed to go into Kodak's printer. <coughs> but it does work great for other printers as well. Um, Magic Goo. Um, I've tried Magic Goo. Um, I don't mind it. It's not my favorite. I'm still a glass and glue stick guy. Just the old-fashioned glue stick, just like this stuff right here. That's all I use, and some glass, and I'm done uh, with that. Now, I knew this was coming up. Have I finished Superman yet? Is Superman done? Superman is not quite finished yet. There's not much more to go on the Superman portion. There's a lot to go on the on the base. Uh, I've had to put it aside and uh, do some other stuff. Um, you can go ahead and show that one from Rover, honey. Um, Superman will get done uh, probably in the early part of the new year, and then we're going to auction them off. Uh, and that will go into our Shenzhen fund as well. I'm going to try and do more painting uh, in the new year so that we have um, some stuff to go with. My wife and I have been talking about doing our own t-shirts. Right now, we don't have the space, nor do we have the money to invest into doing our own t-shirts yet. Um, but when that becomes available, we will be doing our own t-shirts and hats and mugs and all kinds of goodies, and then you guys will be able to order right from us. Um, and then as, as far as printed and painted pieces go, um, I've got a few that I will be showing off again here in the new year. And I don't think I'm going to do many more painting tutorials. Somebody had asked me if I would do an airbrush tutorial on Superman. Um, and I might pick another one to do. Um that on so what's the cost per kilogram for the kodak ben's asking kodak runs in at about 37 dollars for uh 750 grams so it's it's a higher end filament it's a little bit more expensive you don't get quite as much um, but it is a really good uh filament i'm finding uh, i have a magnetic bed and got that for like 14 bucks works way better than glass I'm glad that works for you. Uh, I don't mind magnetic beds. Um, I've used PEI, and most of them now are coming with PEI either powder coated on there or um, it's a sticker. Um, and to be honest with you, there's maintenance to PEI. Uh, with glass, there's very little maintenance in my opinion. 
um, and I've used a lot of it so I just basically wipe it off when I think there's too much glue stick and at the end of the day um, it works your finishing videos got me hooked on your channel well thank you very much uh, tech graphics 101 if you want to see more painting stuff let me know I'll be happy to do more painting stuff if you want me to zero in on a specific target let me know put it in the comments down below or send me an email richard at the first layer dot com uh, my wife will just type that into the chat right now so um, if you've got something specific you want to see me do um, I'm happy to go ahead and do that for you um, and do a video on it. I don't guarantee that it will come tomorrow or the next day, but uh, I'm sure we can get something uh, out there. TK's 3D Prints. I love BuildTac. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, I've used BuildTac as well, and I went through a lot of BuildTac um, in the beginning. Uh, Ray uses Ultrabases. I've tried those as well. And at the end of the day for me, I'm just going to stick with plain old glass and glue stick. It seems to work. Art Eckstein says I use plain glass, no, ad no additives. Um, that's great. Uh, the reason I like glue stick is, is A, it ensures that I'm, it's going to stick to the bed. Uh, B, if I'm printing with PETG, you need that interference layer on glass anyway. Otherwise, you'll pull chunks out of the glass. And I pulled chunks of the Ultra Base out as well. Um, using PETG, so um, yeah, glass and glue stick has always been my tried and true, and I've tried them all. I've tried dust and print. I've tried magic goo. I've tried hairspray. I've tried sugar water. I've tried uh, what is that one that we've got here? Um, 3D gloop. I've tried that, uh, and in all honesty, no fuss, no muss. I do not like hairspray one raz. I'm going to tell you, I have a real hate on for hairspray, and I'll tell you why. Because it gets into everything. And at the end of the day, um, it can cause you 3D printing issues down the line. What are you 3D printing, Paul's asking. Um, this is one of the test files. I think it's an elephant. No, it's a pig. Oh, it's a pig. This is a pig. Magic Goo is a great product. I'm not knocking it. I think it works well. Um, flex plates are great as well. It all depends on what material is on them. So, Wayne, a nice thing about glass is that uh, if your bed is warped, the glass will make up for it. Uh, I've used both glass and magnetic. Uh, if you have a flat bed, mag magnetic's great. Glue stick here on glass. like to hear that. Um, Wayne, you're absolutely right about that. Um, if your bed has any deviation in it, that magnetic bed is going to follow that deviation. Um, where I think it's better at the end of the day is to um, use a mirror. If you can use a mirror, use a mirror. Mirrors have to be truly flat. Not all glass is created equally, and I have found that out through experience. I've put rulers on glass and just watched the ruler do this from side to side, corner to corner. Um, I really do like having uh, a mirror, and uh, I know nothing here has a mirror on it right now. My ones at home have mirrors on them, and that has to be truly flat. Because if it's not truly flat, it gives you that funhouse look. So the best thing for me, I find, is that I get much better heat distribution across the surface of the mirrored glass because of that metalized coating on the backside. It does help with uh, adhesion to your print. Um, I use BuildTac so I can turn the printer off with long prints and restart the next day. That's a great tip. Yeah, absolutely. I spray the hairspray into a small paper towel and wipe it on the bed where I'm going to print. That's that's a good way to do it, one Raz. Yeah. Use what works for you. I, and Larry, I agree with you 100%. Use what works for you. Uh, I'm not telling you to use glass and glue stick. That's my preferred method. You may have something different, and that's great. If it's working for you, stick with it. Um, I just I find that the easiest thing for me is glass and glue stick. And it doesn't matter what material I'm printing with. So, What else we got going on here? Um, a thumbs up, Wayne says, on the mirror also. Yeah, I really like mirrors. 
Uh, and they're cheap. I mean, you can go and buy a pack of mirrors here in North America. In Canada, at Lowe's, you can buy a pack of six for like $16. Um, and they'll last you quite a while. We are getting pretty close to the end. Uh, looks like we're about five minutes out from wrapping things up tonight. Uh, it's been a long day for me. Uh, I've been back and forth to the studio and getting things done. I'll be back in here tomorrow doing some more recording for you guys. Um, so it's, yeah, I've got a lot of things i got to catch up on. Uh, being away sick with migraines, things just don't work out. Foam brush, Rick says. Foam brushes work well as well. Um, with that said, guys, uh, again, if you're looking for the merch, you can, uh, if you're looking for t-shirts, they come in gray, black, and purple now. Um, you can get them off of our Teespring store. You can get coffee mugs. Um, there's all kinds of other stuff that helps to support the show as well, because we get a, a commission off of all of that stuff. So it does help to support the show. Um, got some interesting product projects coming up. I'm going to be doing a... A teleprompter um, based on the one that uh, was done by um, Tom's 3D. Uh, Tom is a, a great guy and he's got lots of good information. I'm going to kind of simplify it a little bit. I'm going to start using a teleprompter here pretty soon. Uh, you may have guessed I'm fairly new to 3D printing. I just be buying cheap filament off of eBay with mixed results. I'm uh, dunning myself. Um, sausage, you know what? If you can, check out some of the little better uh, filaments. Check out filaments.ca. Uh, check out um, Protopasta in the States. Uh, there's a lot of great, great filament out there. And you don't have to be stuck with crap off of eBay. Yes, thank you very much. Remember, folks, to hit that like icon. <laughs> And show your support. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. How's my finger doing, Paul's asking. My finger is fully healed. Yep, thank you very much for that, Paul. I really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to get down to the U.S. I probably won't get down to the U.S. next year. I'm probably going to be waiting till the year after 2021 if I'm not dead by then. And uh, hopefully we'll get down there. And Because I'd like to go and see my good friend Jerry Knapp. Um, from uh, 3D HP and or 3D printing and painting. Uh, Jerry's uh, not in the house tonight, but uh, great guy. Thanks for everyone who came out tonight. Ray saying yes. Please remember hit that thumbs up. Put it if you've got any suggestions again. Put them down in the description or down in the comments below, or send me an email. I'll be happy to uh, go ahead and take a look at that. And Zeltec is a decent cheap filament in the United States. That's great, Wayne. Um, Ziltec I haven't tried yet. I'd like to get my hands on some of it and try it out. Um, what else do I like? I, Color Fab I like. I think they have a great filament as well. Uh, so there's all kinds of the ones out there. Did you print your shirt as this, the same filament on your background wall? Hexes, LOL. No, actually I didn't. These were done with our purple and it just happened to be a pretty close match to the purple of our show so with that said guys thanks very much for joining me tonight as always remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print and i'm going to see you guys again on wednesday when we talk about this stuff i always forget the first word graft milk filament all right so we'll see you guys on wednesday bye